So how you doing, Teddy? What's up, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm just kind of chilling. How's your uh, How's your season been going? Well, you know, you can look at the map. Tell oh. me, man. Let me look at the map. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It looks like you're doing pretty good there, bud. Uh, you're uh, officer in Arno, right? You're not the officer, but you're one of the one of the big boys, right? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't want to, you know, get too narcissistic or anything. But yeah, that's a way you could put it for sure. Okay. Okay. So uh, yeah, I mean, you guys have done pretty well for yourselves. I, I would say this season. Um, how has it uh, been overall? Uh, working with or allying with uh, Lothar and the uh, good group of guys. Yeah. Oh, for sure. They're all great guys. And I have experience with a lot of them from last season, Air War. So uh -huh. A lot of them are really good. Some old Rohan guys. Yeah. You've been, cool. doing, you've been doing anything cool uh, with builds or anything? Anything you've been, any, anything niche or weird you've been trying out? That any, any of your heroes or commanders? Boromir, baby. I am. I love Boromir from the movies, so I am incredibly biased towards him. So I've just been trying him out. I have been playing enough in order to actually get him like you know max level, max respect, and everything. But he's just right. fun. Dude, yeah, I feel like he's definitely a little on the down though. Like he has some good, some good stuff in R five, right? His R five tree's got some pretty good stuff. Oh yeah, you need him to be R five in order to be good because that's when. Here, let me pull up skill tree. What's that? What's that like main title ability? The horn or whatever horn of Gondor or something. Horn of Gondor. That? Yeah, that's, in my opinion, it's by far the best overall, purely because, I mean, 20 plus damage for the first three rounds, that's just insane, and to me at least, and it affects commander and allied units, so if you pair that with High Warden of the White Tower, it does crazy damage, dude. And do you get, like, stun immunity with that, or no? No. Like, what's, what's the final, like, what's the 15 out of 15 perk you get? Just gets might for a plus 15 Oh, lighting. might, okay. Yeah. Right. So, kind of a lame plus for uh, max, but, you know still good that's cool i'm just now working on a alerts build because he got changed up a little bit and um everybody likes the shadow a lot because the shadow does like the aoe damage but i've been working on alerts and i've been working just like i want his r10 weapon that's really i, I really want um because that's like the i was looking at like you know r10 weapons for evil and there's not really anything that really stands out like as amazing well, there's like some good ones on commanders that aren't good. So it's like, do I want to buff or like invest in a bad commander for a cool art um respect ten weapon? I don't want to do that. So yeah, probably not. Um, that stuff gets expensive too. Yeah, but like as you like, I mean, it's been like three seasons now, and I almost have enough to make the first R ten weapon. And I'm like, I want it to be Lurts. You know, I don't want Gothmog. Uh, his is not good, especially because I have like the the best in slot weapon for Gothmog, which is like a, a golden mace, black mace. It's uh, It's got like plus three attack on it for orcs. And it has like orc damage. So it's like literally the best weapon you could possibly have. And uh, the R10 weapon is like, you get 3% damage if battling on a structure. It's like, a, mm -hmm. it's horrible. That's good, man. I it's good. Like it's good. If I didn't have something better, you know. What do you have that could possibly be better than that? So this is three percent damage when battling on a structure, right? For orcs and trolls. Mm -hmm. I have a black mace. Oh, also like the stats are might and speed. Orc speed and orc like dude, orc speed. Speed is so dumb because. I mean, when it comes to like beating, dwarven units. Well, you you pretty much already do anyways, right? And you'd never beat Calvary because Calvary's got like 120, 130 speed, you know? Like, yeah. so like having 10 speed doesn't, or 20, even 20 speed doesn't do anything. Like it, it, speed is pretty much irrelevant unless you have some kind of like damage modifier on the speed. Mm -hmm. um, so like when you have like a piece of gear that gives you like your troops speed, I mean, if it's not cavalry and you're not facing other cavalry uh, for good side, I don't, I mean, that's not like, I mean, well, I guess it's more useful for good side. And I guess it's more useful when I'm facing, when I'm fading evil. But when I'm facing, when it's evil facing good or good versus evil, speed is pretty crappy a stat uh, for the, the evil side. But like, in like, obviously in mirror matchups, like when you're, I got uh, two wish kings fighting each other, whoever has the most speed on their troops wins. Yeah. If they, have, if they have like the correct builds 
So like yeah, I exactly. guess that's the only time speed really matters too much, unless you have some kind of like da damage modifier in your perks. Like Lurtz has a speed damage modifier. Um, but yeah. So anyways, I, I have the best weapon, and so that's why I'm gonna long rant short. Um, I just want to get Lurtz's weapon because Goth Mog, which I do invest in, it is not good enough to spend. I'm not gonna. I'm not. Also, I'm not gonna like purchase the mithril with gems either like f that dude yeah that seems like a that. waste bro i'm not doing that no not for there's no i don't think there's anything r10 that's like so op you would do that i don't know i'm mostly free to play you know what i mean i've spent like i bought the season pass a couple times but right i don't have enough money to just throw around on a mobile game you know what i mean right so I know I just kind of stick to the basics and stuff like that, like the Forge Discord server. Oh my god, that's my baby, dude. Yeah, I know. Scary, dude. I feel like they don't do enough to promote it, like people, because people always like Google. I mean, I when I first started playing, I would always Google, like this build, that build, and I'm like, where can I find this information? There's there's no information out here about any of this stuff, and meanwhile, the Forge has like everything you would ever want, and like you want to see like someone testing out a weird build you go you just surf through like bragging rights or you surf through like commander build help or something and people just post things and there's discussions and like dude it's the, you could spend hours on the forge literally hours just the first reading. time i the first time i saw it is i literally spent hours looking at every single good commander even evil commanders bro right and it's like not even a paid promotion. Like there's nothing. There's nothing. It's just like the best Discord server ever. Like they do the mod. The mods do such a good job. Um, and oh. like all the testers. It's like God. God bless them, the, dude. The public channels aren't even toxic either, dude. They're just like no. you know, like hangout stuff like that. Everybody's just chilling, asking about commanders, stuff like that, bragging about prestige, whatever. Yeah, I like it a lot. I like it a lot, a lot. <clears throat> so you said Boromir, huh? Right on, dude. Yep. Um, what can you do with your tier four? Anything? T four. I normally throw him on uh, Boromir because he gives a lot of bonus bonuses to men. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I mean the other I use Aowen all cav or uh, all cavalry. Right. Same thing as Gandalf. So I don't use the T fours a lot, especially yeah. because Arnors are kind of you know, underpowered. They're just kind of basically tank archers. Being an evil player, I just don't know why anyone would never. What anyone would never run Dwalin. Dwalin is like just OP, dude. Like just so OP. And he's so cheap. You just throw like some guardians on him and something else, and and he just goes to goes to work, dude. Goes to town. He does massive damage. Just collapsed but... cheeks, dude. <laughs> Last got season, to... I got thrown around by Zag a lot. I got he, he tossed me, man. My dwelling got destroyed by his WK. I retired him as a joke. Um, I refused to use him this season out of bad memories of that one fight. But the thing is, yeah, maybe you still do lose, but, like, when you're facing tons of Dwalins, like, they just chunk your Witch King. They just chunk them up. They just take a big old bite out of them every time. And you're just like, fuck, dude, I can't get through any of these. I can't, because this is what, like, literally, if you want to get inside an, an evil player's head, especially someone who owns a Witch King, all we're looking for is a nice, juicy stack. I'm looking for bang for my buck. I do not care if I get 100 to zeroed at all. I'm full sending my Witch King at a stack of 3, at a stack of 4, at a stack of 15. Like, balls, dude. I'm just fucking balls to the wall. I'm throwing the Witch King, and I'm trying to get as many armies done as I can. And you can't do that when you get chunked by Dwalins and Gandalfs. And the Dwalin, like, yeah, sure, he does lose. But, like... The, the really ones like the fire resist chests and stuff like that too like oh god dude it's such a cock block I feel you man so you're telling me that the greatest way to fight evil would be to spread out forces as much as possible uh, yeah when you when you guys stack on a point dude we love it we 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 absolutely love it I, I promise you and we and then we like rally up and we're like, all right, we're gonna send we're gonna send some two pathers with some good anchors, and uh, we're gonna full send full send the witch kings, dude. And we just watch and we then we take screenshots of it when we're done and we post it in Discord. All the armies like flying away. Oh god, it's so much fun. But we do it all the That's time. Good That's good to know. I'll yeah. put that in the notes app. I'm gonna pull up a notebook right now and I'm gonna write all this stuff down because you are giving me some 
great information right now. Yeah, just so you know, man. Especially uh, if you know we've got Witch Kings that, dude, we love full sending them on a big stack. Yeah, so, pretty much everybody is Witch Kings now, right now. Yeah, I don't especially. think I've seen a single player without Witch Kings, though. People would see There's a couple, but, um, you know, they still put in some good work. And you can, obviously, you know, the, whoever, like, the, the better, the Witch Kings that have, like, the better gear and Witch Kings that don't, like, they just have that little extra push to make it through. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Um, well, I mean, let's, uh, let's, like, switch gears and dive into, um, your perspective on the season events, um, leading up to the fall of Barry Eggs. Um, I'm just gonna like give you full reins and feel free to rant as much as you want and give give your perspective. I'm just gonna listen and, and absorb it all. All right. All right. I mean, I think pretty much everything that is built up to Variax quitting and you know us taking Variax capital, and just the overall map layout right now boils down to Helm's Deep. What happened is we had Helm's Deep in the plans for months as we started to invade Rohan, right? Uh-huh. So we start going up there. Isengard realizes that we are pathing through Helms to the keep and they message me. They go in, uh, what's going on here? You know, it's right next to our capital. We don't feel comfortable with that. La da da da. Completely fair. So we start opening talks, trying to figure out ways around it. They're saying we don't want you to, and if you do, then we're gonna, you know, take the critical crossing right by Orthanc and come in and clear you guys out of Helms. So, I mean, there's no other way to take that other than a direct threat. So we said no, we have to take Helms. Then we went to Very Eggs, right? And this is where Santa and Lone Wolf and stuff like that come in. And we talked for, I mean, it must have been 12 hours on and off about it. Brutal conversations, you know, scum, just bad language in general, bad, just toxicity all over the place on both sides. And we came to the conclusion that we'll leave it neutral. So I go to announce it to the faction, talk with other Arnor leaders about how on earth we're going to do this without players, you know, revolting. Obviously, we didn't do it the right way because pigs came back and they, you know, weren't very happy about it. Understandably, of course. I mean, we had it in the plans for a week like that. We came around the day before and said, yeah, we have to leave it neutral. It's a juicy 1,000 keep. I mean, they want action. Season's a little boring at this point because Rohan's not fighting back. So we take it. Isengard worried about them coming over very eggs tensions are all over truth there's no trust anymore in the alliance at all people are bored out of their minds so we're just like you know what we'll just blow up the alliance right now just because it's going to happen at some point and there's been a lot of tension building up over the past little while it seems like it's inevitable so we'll go with what we thought was the fairest thing is we'll give you guys eight hours to try to have you guys come up with a strategy whether you want very eggs to land over in the west or something like that to try and help defend eisen whatever you guys want to do we'll give you time for it and then we're going to go all in like it's a war and that's just kind of what led up to now gotcha i can um <clears throat> i can already see or i can already f- i can just like feel the uh the questions from like oom and santa and all the retorts from like lone wolf uh, about all this but uh oh yeah there's a lot there was a lot i i was in that i was in that uh chat and um like to my perspective it seemed like yeah like the, the whole thing the whole all that confusion about um helms deep i was like god i wish we could just like because some of the isengard players are are um well from a different country obviously and i don't know like a lot gets lost some things get lost in translation and i know um i don't know i just felt like it could have been avoided but at the same time um how much did the opinions of the new Gondor players that had joined you, did, did they influence uh, the mood of the faction? All of it. I mean, All of it. Not, it, wasn't, it wasn't just exclusively them, but they were the new players. They were the biggest whales. They spent a ton of money. And understandably, they want to throw that money around. You know what I mean? They want action. They don't want to drop you know, $2,000 just to stare at a uh, river all season. So, I, it, I, it was basically, faction chat was a war zone that day, trying to convince people. They're like, you know, screw you, we're going to take it anyways. Tried to convince them otherwise, they were dead set. So I'm like, you know what, well, this is what our season's going to look like. May as well try to make the best situation out of it as possible. 
and that's ultimately what led up to the war. So we took Helm's Deep and we played it like we were going to have it captured the whole time. Understandably, Evo players were pissed off about it. I mean, I would have been too, but from my perspective, I don't know what else could have happened, to be honest. I expected everybody to be mad about it. I expected them to take it anyways, but I mean, I, I don't really see another way it could have played out, to be honest. <clears throat> Um, just to play devil's advocate, uh, one way it could have possibly played out is you, I mean, possibly you could have just kind of, I don't know, like, I mean, I, obviously it, it was fine. Like I, I'm like, I'm just saying in theory, cause I, I know from experience this happened for me in my season one where there was a Gondor, um, there was Gondor and there was Mordor and there was like some rogue crazy faction of Gondor this this fellowship of, of, of Gondor that just hated Mordor and we would be literally allied we were allied with Gondor but we were at war with that one faction and so what we did was we literally laid siege to us Gilead and Minas Tirith and we just literally picked the only the forts of the bad the bad Gondor people, and we just destroyed those forts. And meanwhile, all the other Gondor uh, guys, all the other fellowships, they're just they're, they're there, but they're not attacking. We're not attacking them. We're literally like weaving in and out of th their tiles and their land, and we're destroying them. Like we are just PVPing them to death. We only take their tiles when we uh, invade uh, the land. We don't take Gondor keeps. Uh, we like throttle them so much that they can't like really do like take our own territories and we just have a you know an, a nice alliance uh, and we were like is that possible and you guys are like no it's not possible but I mean obviously that's one tiny little voice in the sea of discord and anger and outrage and all the opinions that are flying around that day you know and all the words that are being said um I don't know where I was going with that, but I mean, uh, you're right. That is another option. It would have definitely preserved the alliance. You know, trust probably would have stayed. It was already diminishing, anyways. But there still would be some, even at this point. Ring battle probably still would have been on. But I mean, look at it from our perspective. You know, I've been preaching this all season. If we, you know, some of the things is like, why don't you guys just betray pigs and just take them out? It's like, well, that leaves us in the middle of a civil war and with a possible ring battle brewing between, you know, which kings, and we don't know what other allies you guys have elsewhere, if you guys are lying to us or not, you know, there's oh, a whole gotcha, other, yeah. other alternative. I so think... if we're engaged in a civil war with us, and we're letting you guys, another thing was, let you guys invade Linden, all this stuff, then we are actually absolutely imploding. That leaves the ring open to you guys, and we basically don't have a chance. Because they're yeah. the only one left to fight is Lothlorien, and that's a 2v1 against witch kings. And I have no idea how that would have played out. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, you don't know what what we've got going on. It was frustrating for us because, I mean, we literally had nothing else going on. <laughs> we were like, just trust us. We really don't <laughs> have anything going on. Like, we got nothing going on. We, uh, <laughs> we, all you gotta do is do this. And we were um, actually there was a lot of talks, and we already knew that when it came to uh, the two v two for the ring that you guys were bigger than Isengard and we would probably lose, right? Unless um, we could really do some a lot of work as uh, as Variax. Um, so we were already we were already prepared to to lose. Um, that was like the general like you know, like people who had their, you know, feet firmly planted on the ground, they understand like the reality of the situation. Um, cuz Arnor, I mean Isengard is is pretty small. Um, they have some good players, obviously, but not, n nothing as big as, uh, you know, Arnor, so. Yeah. The whales that came over from Gondor, they're big. They're big time. And they're a good group of guys overall. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, um, in the end, I got to, it's, it came down to a decision of what I have to either protect the players of Arnor or I have to betray a trusted alliance. It was, it was a bad decision for there was no winning in that. It was just whatever lost the least, at least in my perspective. Yeah, yeah, I, I get you. I get you. Um... We also heard that there was some talks that Barry Eggs told Loth that they wanted 
to just do a 1v1 between Loth and Variegs for the ring. Which, huh. Loth was... Loth told us, and we were understandably outraged about it. We yeah, I'd be, I'd be pissed too. I, I don't know anything about that, to be honest. I, I didn't... Uh, I'm just like... Uh, like I'm like in the circle, but I'm not like the the dude that like you know sways anybody. I'm just kind of like here with, there with popcorn, and they're just nice to me, you know. But I, oh. I, I'm just I don't really make any uh, any important decisions, you know. I'm just I, I just look pretty, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So if they had uh, if they were discussing that, <sighs> I did not know that um, the one v one thing. Yeah, I'd be pretty pissed too. Um, but that's just, hmm. yeah, I don't know what to say about that. Yeah, it was, granted, I mean, take it with a grain of salt. We didn't hear it directly from Variax. We heard it from Loth and some of their leaders. So, Well, I, I would trust them. If they said that, them. I would trust them, yeah. I trust them, too, and that's why we took it, and that's where the trust really started to diminish. Mm -hmm. But, you know, whether or not it was 100% true, whether or not it was a misunderstanding, stuff like that, who knows? But mm -hmm. we were going off of what... Loth told us. And obviously, you know, we are we're a united faction with Loth. We have to go with Loth. They have to go with us. Right. Because if we split up, and that's the same thing. That's why I think people like Santa were so pissed off about us declaring on Isengard. Was because if Orthanc falls, then your guys' season is also ruined. Because you need that or else you get none of the points for the ring. The ring doesn't matter. None of, none of the other parts matter. So yeah. you either break it off with Isengard and keep the points and completely lose your chance for the ring, or you stand with them and potentially lose the season anyways. So it was just a horrible situation for these guys, and that's where I think a lot of the outrage and rage came from. Yeah, these this season mechanic, man, is really just effed us. Like, it really did F us. This, yeah. this whole thing did, man. I'm just like, man, I really would have loved to not have this mechanic in the game, to be honest. Yeah, it who knows it how makes out. the world smaller. It really does. It's like, I don't want the world to be this small. This would be a little bigger. Yeah, I know. Because, I mean, in Season 1, or even Season 2, for that matter, having Arnor go all the way to Ortog, that would have never happened. Never would have happened. Even if we would have had the players that we have now. It's just, we wouldn't have been able to get the boost because we were able to long march into Celebrant, or, you know, basically in Celebrant from Lorien. And that's mm -hmm. how we got down to Rohan, and that's how we got a little pocket down. So, I mean, who knows how it would have gone if it wasn't United Faction. Who knows if we would have chose Loth. But I know I was talking with A-Check a lot earlier in the beginning, like, you know, preseason. About and, and, um, Rohan. So You're cool with using his name? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we were talking about it. Yeah, oh, sorry. Gotcha. And he's, uh, just for the viewers, uh, what faction? Rohan. Rohan, okay. Yeah, we um we're not we're not big fans of you guys in uh in Variax. We we have a little more respect for Loth just because we just you know, we fought him pretty hard and we understand that they, you know, are just sticking with their allies and then we're just kinda like just F F the Arnor guys because you betrayed us in our alliance and we hate you all. So I mean I so, completely yeah. understand it. I if I was in your guys' shoes, I would have done the exact same thing. I mean, to a T. Yeah. I've seen the memes and stuff like that. I mean, they're hilarious. They're always hilarious. But... Yeah, they are. They're fantastic. I, yeah. I haven't actually made a meme, but uh, I think I might start doing it because uh, there's not much to do now. <laughs> Dude, I've literally... So I am I am located in the very bottom of the map. The bottom right of the map. <laughs> the very... <laughs> uh, all my stuff is there, dude. I know, I know. Like saying this on the video, they're gonna be like, "Oh, there he is! Let's go get him!" Like, all right. Oh yeah. No. Once you uh, dropped your location in the last one, uh, there was definitely talk of going down to go hunt you down. They were like, "Oh, let's just <laughs> go all the way down." I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you though, it's a bitch to come down here, especially through Nern and uh, Ethelduath and Northern Cons, and it's a bitch. So, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. We still haven't <laughs> even taken Sea of Nernan. That's how many people aren't playing, and no one cares. <laughs> just like, that doesn't matter. Don't oh my even... god, I, I just found this guy. I was just looking for your base down in the bottom right, and I found this guy. I want to know what what is going on over here. Man. Uh, I know who he is. Uh, Piggy. Yeah. 
Yep, yep. He is in the Wolf Discord. Yep. And he is, he runs like that. He's like one of the uh, frequent flyers of that, the, the Wolf Discord. And I don't really know him too well or anything, but <clears throat> he talks a lot. And then uh, one day I saw him down there in the very corner and I was just like, what are you doing here, man? How long have you been here, dude? Probably, oh my god, he's probably know he moved down here like week two. <clears throat> And he's just he just surrounded himself in four since when the war started. I was I was at the Mad or Tug or whatever you call it, um, and Nern Crossing. I was at the Nern Crossing for a while there, and then I finally got overran and destroyed. I just gave up because I was like, ah, whatever, dude. I I got to log off, and they're gonna just wipe me. So I I wrote all these I wrote all these horrible messages. I was like, we don't PvP with backs or we don't play with backstabber. No, we don't game with backstabbers. We PvP them. And then I just said, thanks for something. What did I say? I was just writing tons of forts and just being super toxic. Yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time. <laughs> I love being toxic again. They destroyed I it. I like good fort fort uh, names and fort organization. Those are the best to me. When you can get like a. <clears throat> We could get like <laughs> a bunch of people to organize like a theme for forts in an area. That shit's fun. Bush, Bush. Yeah, well, Bush is like, all right, dude, it's not very original anymore, but it was pretty cool. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not part of the Bush squad, so it's whatever. They're going to hate me for it. They're going to be like, hey, Ross, I fucking heard you said Bush wasn't fucking sweet. It's like, well, sorry, guys, it's, it's not. It's, it's old, all right? You're gonna get crucified. This video is gonna <clears throat> drop. If you're gonna, they're gonna crucify you, dude. Whatever, dude. Whatever. I made a fort last season called Anti Bush. Oh my god, I caught so much flack for that one. It was unreal. You know what, Bush, dude? I, I'm not gonna lie to you, dude. I sometimes outpath Bush squad, anyways. So like, I, they were like, we're the expert pathers, you know. And I still was to places before them. So I don't know, man. Fraudulent. I don't know. A bunch. Of, they're washed up, dude. Washed up. <laughs> In season one, I played Rohan, right? And Gondor were like these veterans, season three veterans who came over, knew a bunch about the game. We were, you know, absolutely nobodies, dude. We knew nothing, all new players, stuff like that. They got really, really, really mad at us. And I don't really remember why. But we clogged all the way from Dunharrow all the way to Edoras with the funniest fort names of all time dude it was the highlight of the entire season it was so funny i wonder if i have still have a screenshot of it people take offense when you uh when you take their stuff dude <clears throat> it's hard not to take it personally you know he's got to not take it personally mm -hmm. and that's um i know a lot of people were pretty pissed that fairy eggs quit because it kind of obviously made the season really boring but i don't blame you guys personally at it for it there's i don't really see another option i mean i, I saw the message that lone wolf said where you said you guys wanted to you know quote unquote play possum just hope that we turn on each other and then maybe try to get something going it's the only strategy that it's the I only can... strategy and um it's not even a good one but <laughs> it's the only one it's like we so and i i saw a lot of things people were saying that uh they were saying uh, oh shit! Well, someone said something yesterday, and I was just like, "Whatever, man. Think whatever you want. We really oh, we quit because it got too hard, or we didn't. We well, we, no, we quit before we had lost. That way, we could like quit on top. And that you know, like that definitely wasn't the case, and that definitely wasn't even the mentality. The mentality one was of sheer depression. We were just like, yeah. dude, these game mechanics." are costing us enjoyment like actual enjoyment we are like the our emotions are high like our emotions are very high and it's not healthy you know and you need to i mean this is a video game you need to play this to have fun like if you're not having fun what are you doing honestly like what are you doing if you're not having fun you just need to stop playing that's if you're not having fun as much as people are gonna flame you for it hey it is what it is you know you can't make everybody happy. Everyone's going to have an opinion of you, and that's fine. But you got to just, you got to do you at the end of the day. And doing us was just dropping it, just dropping everything and trying to enjoy the game somewhere else. That's, I get you. 
bad as that I've sounds. I've been going to season one myself quite a bit. <clears throat> I mean, I've been thinking about it for a while. Just Here's because the... I'm a free to play player in a server full of whales, it's. Mm. Here's the thing, though. The I don't. I don't really like my mentality would be to never do that um, for two reasons. One is the obvious one, like I've invested in this account, and the second reason is the same shit's gonna happen there that happens here. You just haven't got there yet. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have faction imbalance. You're gonna have one-sided uh, player activity, all that kind of stuff. It's just gonna happen. It just hasn't happened yet. And maybe you get to dominate some noobs early on, but I mean, what are you gonna do? You're not gonna go to. Se- are you going to season two? Like, what are you gonna do? Yeah, exactly. Just go to another season one server and just play it again. That'll probably get stale. Dude, and I can't. I can't do that to myself, dude. I can't. Like, I like I saw Santa. Right, he's got like a Thranduil, like T three Thranduil. He's got like a Gimli. He's got a Theoden. Dude, if I got good commanders, I'd be so pissed. It would make me feel so bad because I'm like. Do I need to, do I stay and use this and use these? Do I abandon the other account? And it's like no, but then you gotta abandon this account because like you can't you, you can play both, but like you can't play both effectively. You can't be a beast like an absolute god in one and I don't know. At least in my in my mentality is not like that. Anyways, I can't I can't do it. like I can't do what I did at the at the nerd crossing yesterday. If I have two accounts, I can't just like switch on back and forth. Like I need to be on it. I need to be on the ball, reinforcing, attacking, defending, swapping tiles, poning noobs, dude. Poning noobs. And I know people who have one account running on their computer and another account on their phone or some other device, and it's I don't know how they do it, dude. I don't know how you can. Dedicate. How's that fun? How's that I know fun? it's. It seems like it's overloading. You know what I mean? It's. I don't know. I don't understand the joy in it because you're flipping back and forth. You can't focus fully on one thing, especially if you're in two different battles at the same time, trying to reinforce an attack on one account and then worrying about, you know, a witch king attacking you and the other one. Can't yeah. do it. Yep. 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 <clears throat> yeah. Um, what are you guys' plans for uh, season, the next season? Anything? Season four? Just uh, hop on in and yeah probably uh, yeah probably probably take it a little bit easier you know ironically that's why i wanted to go to arnor because i didn't want to deal with all the stress and stuff like that like what happened at homes and with very eggs and everything that's why i went to arnor because i thought it'd be a mediocrely sized faction to the point where we'd make a difference but not big enough to the point where you know we were a centerpiece faction obviously <laughs> obviously that didn't work out but yeah i mean it did work out and it didn't work out Still a good season. I mean, technically, oh, I mean for you guys. And um, you said you're free to play. So, like, what do you have then on this account? Uh, on your account, I mostly level up my Gandalf, my Boromir. At least right now, I've done Gandalf, Eowyn, Gandalf, Waylon, but Gandalf is the main one because he's the only one that can actually keep up with some of the whaled out guys, even a little bit. Oh yeah, he's really good. Um, yeah, it's, I think uh, the only time I've actually lost this season with my Witch King goes to Gandalfs. I mean, it's only the Gandalfs. I'm trying to think if anything else has really clapped him. No, I don't think so. I think it's been even people with like subpar gear. Uh, if, you, if you honestly know how to gear your Gandalf, like you can beat a Witch King, but a lot of people don't and they take the wrong talents and they optimize for like greed instead of but the thing is the, I think the Witch King isn't like the Witch King optimization for Gandalf, not like your standard one, so you have to like swap back and forth. If you like, if you wanna, if you wanna like do that, it's kind of like a pain in the ass, or I don't know. Yeah, yeah. the biggest one I mean is high alert because it gives minus fifty percent focus, burn, poison. That one's huge. You need that one if you're gonna go against the Witch King. You don't have a choice to run it. So, but you generally, I mean, if you're just playing, if especially if you're fighting good, you just no reason to have that. So you'll have to switch back and forth depending on who you are, and it gets really tedious. And the gems count kind of goes to the wild after a while. Yeah. I feel like the, the gems are... I feel like the time in my apothecary, in my hospital, has been, like, increased from, like... Like, last season was bad, too. I know, that's, when I, that's when I noticed it, honestly, was last season. I felt like when I played before, I would never have, like, these huge, 
wait periods to re- like return my troops. Did they? They must have increased it or something. I think. So it feels. feels like it. it definitely feels like it. It feels bad. They need to fix that. On they need to. Yeah, they need to fix that. They need to fix a lot of things. This game is so poorly balanced at times. I don't know. Maybe that's just me because I'm free to play. But no, you're not. Um. It's like they create these systems, and they they no they create them broken intentionally, and then they sell you the answer uh, with gems. Like, oh, this is broken. Here's how you fix it. Pay us five bucks. You know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which is obviously a bad way to, uh, you know, build a game, and I don't think it's good for player longevity either uh i feel like like as as they as you go on people who have invested will stay but everyone who hasn't is just gonna drop off i don't know i don't know exactly i'm not an expert but i just that's the way it feels it feels like they're not gonna have a lot of player retention as yeah, they move and on. they're not gonna draw in because i don't know if you've seen i'm sure you've seen the ads that they run yeah every now and then those are not gonna draw in any new players man there's yeah I mean, it's a complete lie. It's nothing like they advertise at all. And because the people who spend money aren't going to continue to spend as much money as they did at the beginning, and the people who are the new players probably aren't going to drop that much money on a game like this, or else they already would have, sort of thing. Right, right. So it's hard because Season 1 servers are going to start to fall off over time. Yeah, I hope I'm so. I'm not a marketing expert, though. So Either am I. I hope they do. That way they can... Like 180, some of these things. Like, they need to reduce gem costs. I think it's... I don't know. I think it's kind of a, a bad idea to have it, like, cost 20 gems to respec your talents every time. I think that's way too much. Especially for the amount of time, you know, like, that I do that. I just think it's it's absurd to say, hey, we're giving you all these talents and trees and all these things to play with. But if you know you need to pay up if you want to customize and like that just feels bad and they should remove it because it feels bad. It's pretty 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 simple actually. Like design concepts, if it feels bad to do, and if you would stop someone from doing it because they don't want to pay, then you probably shouldn't have it in the game. I mean, you but, would think, right? Like if you I have think. a Gothmog and I want to siege with Gothmog and have plus plus fifteen siege on my army. I have to pay 20 gems to do that. And I have to pay 20 more gems if I want to go back to fighting with my Gothmog because I'm not going to have seven points that don't do anything when I'm in a battle. So okay. like, I have to pay the cost. And that feels bad. Like I, I And the doing like not doing that feels bad too. Mm-hmm. Because, then, yeah, because then you miss out on the certain buffs or whatever. It's yeah. the same thing with the Gandalf and switching between fighting good versus evil or hell, even fighting... You know, a Theoden with all cavalry versus a Dwalin with all dwarves. Something like that having to switch builds depending on the commander and stuff like that. It can seriously rack up after a while. Yeah, it's really annoying. Uh, I, I honestly couldn't tell you, if it weren't for the community in this game, I, I, I probably wouldn't play it, to be honest. Like, I, I just enjoy... I, I had uh, my buddy Keith on yesterday, and, he, you know, he was the one that got me into the game, and... If it was for Keith, and we played with like him, and um, like his his dad and his brother, and so there was like a solid. There was, there was like four, you know, f- four of us, you know, IRL in real life, and we were all playing the game together, and that was a lot of fun. Um, and then we, they all kind of dropped off, and I was like the last one kind of standing, and then I joined this community, and you know, the rest is history. But like, if you don't have a good community and it feels like well i guess that's any game too really yeah i mean it always helps to have friends like i have my dad that i played the game with he's actually still on the server i'm not gonna like name drop or anything yeah exactly it's just a cool little thing you know good conversation piece for times like that you know what i mean yeah you help him out a little bit you know like hey dad so you know you know if you want to if you run this talent and this it's better against this and like watch out for these or yeah that'd be cool i'm always exactly i'm such a nerd too i just love talking about like builds and new ideas and percentages and <clears throat> me too man i mean i'm still probably playing this game obviously or you know because of the community and i also love the diplomacy part of it you know what i mean talking with other leaders and trades and stuff like that i love that part 
Because if it wasn't for that, and it, I didn't like the community so much, and I didn't have you know genuine friends here, I also would probably have been quit by now. I probably would have quit it halfway through season one. Yeah, I could see people people quitting on evil because of this. You know, like I, I was telling our guys this um, like two days ago, and like like I'm just you know I'm sitting here and thinking like there's a lot of casuals that just like log on and play, and they're like hey would everybody go you know. And I know all the I know all the arguments for stopping playing and like not beating a dead horse and all this stuff. But like at the end of the day, I still feel a little bad. Like my conscience is still like you left you left you left somebody hanging. You know, someone somewhere is like, what the fuck's going on? You know, and they they might have stopped playing because of it. And that that feels bad. That feels bad to me. As as much as I know all the rational arguments of why we did everything we did. It's still, I just, I don't know, it's like not, I don't feel like 100% validated still. It's a sticky situation, and especially yeah. for you guys, because of exactly what you just described. And I mean, you're wasting a whole season. You know, your accounts are sitting there dry. Yeah. All the money you sent is just kind of, you know, yeah. sitting there. And I was looking at the, like, the rewards too, and the only way how I'd be able to buy an item from the reward shop is if that my faction took the ring even if we didn't take the ring and we still had like our capital we still had all our regions you know we still wouldn't have enough points to buy an item that that feels weird to me like i it, i would have like 900 points in not not a thousand yeah so you need a thousand to buy an item they're not even good items well Mythical is pretty good, but I don't know. Yep. It's, I mean, I've lost both seasons. I was in Rohan with, you know, not even one fellowship to play with against a full Gondor and a full Mordor alliance season one. Season two, I was in Erebor, and that obviously fell to pieces. Okay. So, kind of been kicked around by evil my whole time playing the game. So, it feels good to you know get back at him, obviously. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to. Man, I'm glad you get a win though. That's good. I, yeah, I mean, I've gotten two wins essentially. I guess we didn't win win last season, but it still felt like a win. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. But I mean, about as close as you could get. Yeah, I mean, it was better than I thought we were gonna get. Yeah, I oh. mean, I still don't really know exactly how everything fell apart last season. It was a, oh, but that's a whole different story. Don't yeah. really want to get into that. I, I don't really know either, to be honest. I just was along for the ride. Um, Me too. I ended up quitting, or not really quitting, but be going AFK about halfway through the season. <clears throat> like, stepping a, stepping back from leadership, I guess we put it. Just because I, I don't know, lost interest, a combination of lost interest and a combination of, you know, schooling picking up. Yeah. Stuff like that. No, that's good. I mean, that's good for your mental health too. I think a lot of I thought I think a lot of uh, Erebor players took a little step back or eased off the uh, eased off the gas. You know, I think like I think they even said Osmosis Jones there. He 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 eased off the gas a little bit just to you know just to play a little uh, a little safer for next season and just come in a little a little easier. Just land oh, yeah. with, you with could, some less turbulence. You know, you could absolutely tell, especially from all the leaders from you know our season two. Every single one of them laid off a little bit. Like, you know, we're going to throw last season out the window, start fresh, you know, new relationships, new everything. It, it was kind of funny to watch, to be honest with you. I mean, and then meanwhile, we've got freaking Santa just, like, flying off the handle. Just, like, God bless him, dude. Just fucking full rage, dude. And doesn't give a fuck. Fuck you, yeah. fuck you, fuck everybody, dude. Fuck my own guys, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, literally, dude. When we told, when you were talking about Hell's Deep and stuff like that, I don't think I've ever seen somebody so angry about a video game in my life. I mean, it was he's, he's probably like I, honestly like just knowing him a little bit. He's he's not that uh, really that angry. He's but he's just like you know how people get our PC and they obviously don't um, say what they think all the time. Yeah, like the the filter is strong. Uh, mm -hmm. A little lack of filter could be a good thing, but not all the time. But I mean, I I like honestly, I, I like the way he conducts things. To be honest, I I prefer it. It's more it's 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 more refreshing. I think if everyone had less of a 
a filter, uh, you know, truer intentions would be uh, known and all that. And I don't know, it just makes the game better, in my opinion. Yeah. And yeah, some I also people like, are cringed about it, but. Yeah. yeah. I also like the uh, good cop, bad cop that Lone Wolf and Santa pull. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, that's hilarious to me. No, but, but that's like real, though. Like, that's that's not even like an act. That's the thing. I know. I it's know. Real. Lone Wolf is just a chill dude, and Santa's, yeah. you know. I, I love Santa. He'd you know, be like, he does, obviously he'd be like, like me. God damn it. Just let me negotiate. Just <laughs> just, just let me talk to him. All right? <laughs> let me out of this. No, 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 man. We want to, you know, have a good relationship with him. We don't want to come out saying, fuck you, fuck everything, fuck everything you've ever done yeah. right off the gate. You worthless pieces of shit. You can't do this. You can't even get to the keep on time. You're farming tiles. Wondering. Oh, there was so much shit, dude. There was so much anger. In, in, uh, directed at our own players because people were complaining that their tiles were getting taken and that they didn't they couldn't have, they couldn't find things in time. Some you know some there's I'm not gonna name names. I'm not gonna name war bands. Uh, some war bands just um, I think I know which one you're talking about. It's like they weren't. It's like they weren't ready for season three. God bless them, dude. They just it's the way it seemed. That's <laughs> just the way it seemed that if they weren't. If they didn't have that season three mentality, that go 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 mentality, which is fine, you can have some players that you know you can band together, you know, group some like minds together. It's fine, but uh, yeah. but they need to understand that this was like we're we're go getters. You know what I mean? Like you just, oh if you I don't know, like, I don't know if it was the same for you guys right when you made the United Faction with Isengard. But the amount of messages and complaints I got about, like, Lothlorien stealing our tile, or quote-unquote stealing our tiles, or whatever you want to talk about, it was unreal. I must have been answering 30, 40, 50 messages about it a day for, like, two weeks about the tiles. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it's so annoying, too. People People complain, like, hey, my tiles are on their territory, and they're taking them. It's like, yeah, you dumb fuck. They could take them. It's their region, all right? So maybe it wasn't their region before, but it is now. And so for the sake of everyone's sanity, if your tile is on someone else's region, it's theirs now, okay? If they want to take it, you're out of luck there, bud. You're out of luck. Yep. I don't know what to yep. tell you. But people yep. are like, that's my tile. I spent 40 stamina to get over there, and uh, I lost <laughs> half my army, and I, I I can't find anything anything else around here that, that has that kind of resource production and what am I gonna do now? And it's like, dude, I don't it's care. It's a video game. Calm I down. Don't care, dude. <laughs> like, the exact it's... same conversation. I've had people who are like all the way on the other side of the map. In Linden or not on the other side of the map, but in Linden territory talking about oh, why are they taking my tiles? And I'm like, you know what? I got to a point where it's like, you know what? I'll talk to their leaders about it. We'll get it settled. And then I never answer their messages again. <laughs> That's the way to do it. I, I actually do that in real life all the time. Someone would be like, hey, can you do this for me? I'd be like, yep. Yep. I'll, I'll get right on it. Absolutely. And then <laughs> just, Nor block just, numbers. Just don't do it. Just don't. Uh, so what are you going to do it? I'm going to do it as fast as I can. Yep, for sure. I'm on it. <laughs> the the just, answer answer I give a lot is like when they message me back saying, "Oh, how did it go? What did they say?" Like you know, everybody's really busy with the season developing and everything like that. We're just talking it through with everybody, and you know, I'll get to it eventually. But yeah, yeah, I have a lot. I will take your request into consideration. Thank you. Oh. Just very polite and I hate that and line so much. I hate it so much, dude. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm really like I just I'm all about like just chilling, right? So. Uh, like I'm just, I'm in the, I'm in the loop, but I'm not really like in the loop. Like I'm not like, I, I'm not driving. You know what I mean? I'm mm-hmm. like passenger, you know, I'm just, I'm here. You need a, you need an opinion. I'm all there. I'm there for you guys, but, uh, I'm not taking any, uh, requests. I'm not going to be negotiating anything and I'm not going to be, uh, solving anybody's problems. You'd be but, good at it too, man. You're a chill dude. You'd be good at it. But yeah, yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's there really is no driver at this point in the season. You know what I mean? It's just kind of. Well, I hope there's a driver. How are we gonna get our capital back? How how are we gonna get our seasonal rewards? Huh? Yeah, we're gonna, we're seasonal rewards. Our, we're not gonna get our capital back. What do you mean? Yeah, you know, somebody will whip up some you know diplomatic genius that'll come up 
some crazy trade that'll happen. We're not going to do a PvP zone anywhere. We're not going to like turn the dead marshes into a PvP zone. We'll take yeah. Osgilia, right? We'll take Osgilia. Listen, have... how's this for a trade? All right, we'll give you Os we'll give you all of Gondor. We'll just throw Gondor to the fishes, all right? We'll give you all of the map and we'll give you our capital. All right, if we <laughs> And we'll give you your capital, too. All right. Only thing I care about is I care about the Shire. As long as I can keep the Shire, I'm a happy man. <laughs> Someone's going to be like, just so you know, he has uh, no power for him to negotiate in the comments. It's just like, oh, so yeah, you know, sure. he's, got, he's got no uh, bargaining authority. So everything he said is null. All right. <laughs> Whatever. But, uh, I mean, I'll take it. Done. Listen, if Shake. Shake on it verbally. Exactly. Um, I was thinking, like, what if we get Osgilia, right? Gondor is chilling still, Minas Tirith. The Dead Marshes are a free zone. You guys have Daggerlad already. Loth has Emin, and you give Rohan East Emnet. And that way, everybody is right there, right? And you just go into the Dead Marshes and you just PvP. Please. That would be fun as hell, dude. That would be fun. Maybe Mordor can get some action finally. They might. They might because they're right there too and they could do it. They could throw some cities at the, at the Black Gate and yeah, Ooh, it, could, yeah. it could be possible. Awesome. That's what I was thinking. Like, <clears throat> And then, um, yeah, like, that would be cool. Um, that and be. that kind of is like uh, everyone you know, puts their differences aside for the sake of some PvP and nothing changes as far as like seasonal rewards go. Maybe you just let us have some dignity and get our capital back, but like as far as lands go, I mean, whatever it, it is, what it is. I really, I mean, actually, I don't even think your capital matters. Does it matter? I think it has no, to be. No, because you need the six regions and everything like that. You and, and Isengard. We need, need Isengard's regions. capital, so it's like. God. And you need to get it to level twenty-five. So, so I, we there's to... a lot of talks about people like, oh, well, you know, we get, we should give, you know. You know, Rohan's capital back at the end of the season, and Orthanc, and you know, Variag's capital and stuff like that. It was like. You know, at this point, they half of them have already quit. You know what I mean? There's no way that they'll get the points anyways because they'll have to get it to level 25 again, and they'll have oh, to capture six territories. I'm positive. The... I'm positive that if I wanted to, I could probably rally everybody. Like I, I, I maybe have a little bit of an inflated ego, and possibly don't know what I'm talking about. But I feel like a decent part of me feels like I could get people to, to come back. I could rally people. I mean, it's a serious <clears throat> conversation that we're having right now. To just. But yeah, well, I'm definitely not gonna rally them. Though. I'm not gonna rally them to fight, though. That's the thing. I'm not gonna rally them to fight against the capital. I'll just rally them to take it back, or I'll rally them to PVP. But yeah, yeah. So we don't want to. We don't want to. There's a lot against. of variables and stuff like that. But you know, it's it's a conversation <clears throat> that's being had. It's not Fantastic. completely out of the. Uh, completely out of the picture, you know. Well, that's all we can do. Is. Uh... Just put it out there and see what you guys want to do, cause that's it. We're just kind of waiting on whatever you guys want to do, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I completely feel you. Yep. Maybe uh, Fat Cow, you know, listens to this and uh, maybe he, he messages does. me. He does. Oh, uh, I think he does. I'm pretty sure he watched it. It might have just been like our Discord was talking about it and everything when it dropped because somebody watched it and realized they were talking about the season. You guys talk about the season and everything like that. And like, oh, we gotta watch this because everybody's curious about you know what very eggs position are and everything like that right so discord Damn. was buzzing about it we had yes. a really long laugh about osmosis jones and fat cow though that was funny those are great nicknames that you came up with dude. i just it was like you know just very really quick it was just like uh, osmosis jones <laughs> like the science cartoon is that where you got it from the what this says a science cartoon called i'm pretty sure it's called osmosis jones it's not a science card it's just a cartoon it's got like will smith He's like a white blood cell, and it's got some dude that's like a pill, like an ibuprofen pill or something, or like Tylenol, and they fight, you know, viruses in the body with their guns and stuff. <laughs> dude, I saw that. My the only reason I know about that is because my teacher told us to be in biology class back in high school, dude. It yeah, was crazy. Yeah, just I like a, you know, it's like a like a Disney show, but or an, a Disney anime. I don't know. I think it's, I don't think it's Disney actually, but you know. And he goes, why you got to hit so hard? And when he gets hit in the face, and it's like one of the clips. I don't know. It's funny. But, it's funny as fuck. Yeah, yeah. You changed their names on Discord to Fat Cow and Osmosis Jones, respectfully. 
<laughs> that's funny. <laughs> hey, that's actually pretty funny. Oh, man. Dang, dude. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about uh, before we wrap it up? Uh, no, nah, I'm thinking pretty much everything's off my chest, you know what I mean? Well, I, I appreciate you coming on, man, and just giving us your take. And um, I can already just see, you know, the uh, some of the retorts from our side. But I guess like I was telling you earlier off off recording that I, I you know, I'm not here to not here to grill you, not here to, you know, like I, I like it. You're, you're a cool dude, and I, I'm not here to make an enemy or talk shit or anything like that. Just here to have a good, decent conversation and see what uh see how you guys thought and like your take on the whole thing because i know you were one of the guys in the driver's seats <clears throat> thank you i appreciate that man mm-hmm. yeah I was, i'm gonna be honest i was a little nervous about getting grilled you know what i mean but you're a cool dude i would, i didn't expect it to but it was definitely something on my mind i appreciate you not going like that yeah dude for sure for sure i don't think i could do that honestly be like why the fuck did you give in what the f-? no i'm just kidding no, I'm just um, but yeah, dude. Like I said, thanks, thanks for coming on, and uh, we do. We should do this again, cause, or and with some more people too, if we can. Yeah. And Alfred's ah, room, yes, sir. Dude, I hope the audio is okay. I really hope the audio is okay because I really just fucked up my audio right before this, right before this started. And I just hope that it's okay. Oh, sure, it'll be all right. Dude. All right. Um, okay, dude. Well, I'll talk to you later. Thanks all again. Right. Yep. See you, man. Peace.